Ooh, exciting. This technical and advisory video is to overclock and underclock your Razer Blade 15 or indeed any laptop or desktop. To try and keep it as short as possible, I've done a lot of these data pages which show you clearly what steps you need to do to get prepared and get your mindset ready for underclocking and overclocking your graphics card. Okay, I've got two scenarios for you here. I've got an application, Combuster, which shows your frames per second, and we can see clearly what happens when you increase or shall we say overclock your graphics card and what happens when you underclock your graphics card and you can make a decision there whether it's worth it or not. The second scenario I've got for you is a game on play which is MTG Arena and it has graphics, whiz bangs and stuff and I want to play it in 4K, maximum settings and to see if I can reduce the power to the graphics card underclock basically and the CPU to see if we can cool it down and not notice any performance loss whatsoever. And I don't want it to be throttling, which obviously it seems to be doing at the moment. And obviously it'll be quieter, I assume. Okay, interesting results. Now in any other previous videos, I've actually explained what the memory frequency does. The GPU sends the information to a memory buffer. When the memory buffer has actually created a full frame, it then releases it and gives it back to the GPU and then it displays it on the screen. So if it's creating images faster than the memory can handle it, then you'll get a pause. And this is what's showing you here on the frame rate. We've increased the call frequency by 150, but we haven't actually got any more frames per second. It's only when we increase the memory to the same level, plus 150, that we've increased by 10 frames per second. Okay, next up is the game I play a lot, MTG Arena. I don't want to run this as cool as possible. At the moment, everything defrauds. The fans are, can go up and down a fair bit, not maximum. The chassis is a little bit warm to the touch, and you notice it's getting warm. I'm playing on a wooden desk, so there's plenty of airflow and stuff like that. So you might think, oh, why don't I reduce the resolution and, um, and the graphics quality? I totally agree with you on that one. If I bought it myself a nice cheap other brand of laptop, or I bought the Razer to be a no compromise. So I'm not compromising on the quality of what I see. I'm just going to give it a little hand and see if we can calm these proprietary processes, which Razer hasn't got anything to do with, and give the laptop a little hand. So as I was running these tests and noting down the results, you know, and the maximum CPU and the GPU and the averages, etc., it came evident to me that the CPU is where all the heat was coming from. And because they share the same vapor chamber, it was adversely affecting the graphics card. But there's no point underclocking the graphics card because the CPU was causing all the heat. So I needed to can take control of that. Decided to lower the core voltage, which I've shown in other videos, to see if that made any difference. And it did make a difference on the CPU, but not really on the GPU temperatures. Apart from the average, that did go down a few degrees. So I lowered the core frequency on the CPU again, and that made more. What happens if I then lower that after burning on a really low frequency? There's like the minus 350 on both of them. And it didn't really make much difference on the CPU temperatures. The CPU is still heating up the graphics card. So I lowered the cores right down and I got like minus 11 degrees on the maximum temperature of the CPU and minus 15 on the average. So that's really good. The graphics card, which seems to throttle at 70 degrees C, didn't go as high as 70 degrees and the actual average was right down to 58. So I'll save nine degrees. So, am I happy? Awesome. I've gone from wearing this to this. Oh, all right. Man. This isn't me on the right. I don't wear shorts. I'm a tad wastier than that. I hope you learned something from this video tutorial. I had fun doing it. It's taken about three weeks. Lots of effects, lots of editing. If you enjoy watching these, please subscribe. Leave some comments, thumbs up and stuff. I'm hoping to give more features and more experiences. For Till then, bye.